I still say that the <laughs> snorks are better at surfing than you are. They are. Still to come this afternoon, there's news round on Butterfly Island, but now it looks like Brian has decided to leave home. Honestly, this is turning into a horror movie. Every minute, another one disappears. <sighs> Well, you're all still here, then. At least I've got one day to work out what to do before the Warbles come back. Can you imagine what they say if they walk through the door right now? <laughs> We're home, babies! Oh! you've been brought home by the police. Do you realise the shame that you've brought on this family? Do you know what your father's name is? John. Your father's name is Mud. John Mud? Those people that you cheated hold him in contempt. He's a broken man. Hello. Aren't you? What? A broken man. Oh, yes. Because his son is a cheat. A liar and a crook. It's all in a good cause. No one complains when other people do things in a good cause. Bob Gildoff does things in a good cause. You say you ought to be made a saint. But when I do things in a good cause, I get told off. Bob Geldof does not fill up other people's houses with boa constrictors and piranha fish. There was only one piranha fish. It ate up all those other people's pets. It only ate one goldfish. I don't see what all this fuss is about. No one gets annoyed when we eat fish. It was Mrs. Warple's pet goldfish. Had a name. It was called Robin. So? If I call a piece of fried cod Fred, does that mean I can't eat it? What about that boa constrictor eating up all those pet mice? And the chicken that ran away? He needed the exercise. Well, I have had it up to here with you. You tell him. Tell him what? He is getting no more pocket money till all those people who lost their pets have been paid back. No more pocket money. And there's the compensation to Mr. and Mrs. Warple for the damage to their house. You tell him that. Right. No more pocket money. Till everyone gets paid. Right. So there. <laughs> Normally, he keeps the answers in the left-hand drawer. How much are we selling them for? Five pence for ten answers, and I'm going to need it. They've stopped your pocket money, have they? Yes, honestly. Just because I try to help a few people out, this is what I get. How long for? They reckon until everyone's been paid back. The measly amount of pocket money they give me anyway. It'll be the middle of next century. Anyway, I've got a plan. I think you ought to be careful with your plans. The last few all went wrong. Only because of unforeseen circumstances. This one cannot fail. <laughs> Why? What are you going to do? I'm going to be nice to them. Starting with giving Dad a birthday present this evening. Is it his birthday today? No, not for another six months. But I can't wait that long before I get my pocket money again. Mummy's going to be the tough one, though. Get us something for a hobby. Which one? Motorbike mechanics, boot making, you name it, she does it. The latest one's martial arts. Get us something for that. No, I've got it. What? I'll get us some flowers. Ajime. Te. Kuzuri! are for you. Oh, they're beautiful. They're just like the ones growing in Mrs. Thompson's garden. What's all this in aid of? Because you are the best mother in the world and because I've been so rotten to you. Happy birthday, Dad. But it's... Well, it's not his birthday. Well, it's just to say sorry for missing the last one. And I promise not to miss them in the future. Why, it's... An Inez axe head. It's very rare. Why, it's... Beautiful. Thank you, son. It's very hard to find the perfect present for the perfect father. Right, I'm going to do the washing up now. The washing up? Yes. It's about time I started helping around the house. I've been so selfish for so long. Do you 
taking these boys and me, so if I smell them, I'll keel over. I think it's a wonderful gesture. It shows a new side to him. There is no new side to him. There's just the rotten old one. He's up to something. I'll get that. Sit down. Don't disturb yourselves. Remember us. You. Because of you, we went to jail for causing a disturbance. And assaulting the police. We came out of prison today. We have been thrown out of our order. The children of the flowers. Our lives have been ruined. And it's all your fault. We've come to take our revenge. I'm sorry, do I know you? Are you trying to pretend that you don't remember that terrible evening? The witchcraft? Oh, that! I'm sorry, I didn't realise. You were my twin brother. Your twin brother? Yes. He's caused us a lot of bother. If you wait here, I'll go and get him. I'll get him. I thought Brian had gone. How do you mean? Honey! Cocky! <laughs> talking about the slug. The slug? Yes, he's escaped from the detention centre and he's after you. What are you going to do now? The only thing I can do is try and persuade my mum and dad to move. So, there you are, boys. Oh, Mr Wiggis. <laughs> I assume you have forgotten that you're staying in at lunchtime? Uh, no, sir. I was just on my way to you, sir, when I thought I heard a noise from in here. Sort of hell. Help. Help. Get to the classroom. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. We don't even have a clue where he'll be. No, but we've got his name. How will that help? Class registers. He'll be in here. Find the registers, then we'll know which class he's in. Uh, can I help you? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. Uh, this is the headmaster's office, is it? Yes, I'm the headmaster. How are you? Oh, good. Well, that sorted that out then. Oh! You must be the two supply teachers the office are sending. Must we? Yes, we must. That's us. It's terrible, this bug. What bug? We don't have any insect sprays on us. No, no, this bug going round. Both Miss King and Mr Hastings are both off with it. Oh. Which of you is the domestic science teacher? He is. Uh, I am. Then you must be general science. No, I wasn't even in the army. Pardon? Uh, yes, he is. Good. Well, I'll go and get someone to show you where everything is, huh? Ah, oh, Mr. Wiggis. Haven't got a moment. Well, I'm just on my way. Ah, oh, Mr. Wiggis, these are the two supply teachers. 
They're looking after things for Miss King and Mr. Hastings. How do you do? Would you mind showing them where everything is? The staff room and the classrooms and so on? Certainly. They wouldn't mind coming along to my room first. I've got a child staying in and I want to keep an eye on him. Oh, who's that? Who else but that creature, Brian Boys? If you're busy, I could get another member of uh, No, staff. no, that's quite all right. We'd be very happy to go along with Mr. Wiggis, wouldn't we? Very happy. Very well. This way. You must enjoy working here, Mr. Wiggis. Oh, this school isn't such a bad place. Have you done much teaching elsewhere? Yes. No. The kids are all right generally, except for this particular one. You have no idea what a complete danger to the human race this one small alleged child can be. Oh, we have. Anyway, I won't be a minute. I'll just see what he's up to. Well, boys, I trust you're learning your lesson. Get him! Master, I don't want to worry you. What is it, Mr. Wiggis? Well, those two supply teachers you asked me to show to their rooms. Yes? They're chasing Brian boys around the school. What? Yes, I went to my room to make sure that he was still there, and they took one look at him, then rushed to attack him. Oh, dear. I know he rouses strong feelings of hostility, but that seemed a bit sudden, even by boys' standards. I wondered whether we ought to call the police. The police? Well, we do have the reputation of the school today. One calls the police. Yes, but well, they look like they wanted to harm him. Come back here, you rotten swine! There they are. Hey, leave this to me, boys. We'll get you later. Cool, thank you, sir. Who are they, boys? Do you know them? Um... Whoever they were, I think we've seen the last of them. Well done, we guess. Anyway, where were we before all this began? Um. You're going to let me off staying in, sir. Nonsense. Get back to that room. Yes, sir. 